Welcome to Trash Imagination, a podcast about reimagining trash. I'm Carla Brown. This week's episode is about cigarette butts, plastic lighters, cigarette packaging, and those old timey cigarette vending machines. Now, that may sound like kind of a nasty topic. But I want you to listen because there are some amazing things that people have made from those items. And cigarettes are a type of trash that would really benefit from creative reuse thinking. If you've ever volunteered with a litter cleanup, then you know that cigarette butts are one of the most common types of litter in the world. Each fall, there's an event called the International Coastal Cleanup, and they gather statistics on what they gather. In 2017, volunteers picked up 2.4 million cigarette butts. It was the most common form of litter. There are 5 trillion cigarette butts discarded each year. There is plastic in those cigarette butt filters, so they are not going to biodegrade. I have not creatively reused cigarettes or lighters in my art projects, but I have been collecting examples of artists who did this, and I found so many, I felt it was time to share these incredible stories. So I imagine the people who are picking up these hundreds and thousands and trillions of cigarette butts have a lot of time to think about what they could make from them. And so there are some very creative things that they have made. Taylor Lane made a surfboard from 10,000 cigarette butts that were collected from beaches in California by many volunteers. A surfing company called Visla partnered with the organization Surfrider, and they have an upcycling contest. The goal of the contest is for people to design a surfboard or any other kind of watercraft from recycled materials. So Taylor won first prize for that contest last year with his cigarette butt surfboard. You can learn more about his project at thecigarettesurfboard.com. And he's now working on a film about the process after a successful Indiegogo campaign. And by the way, you could participate in that contest this year. The deadline for entries this year is September 13th, 2018, and I will link to the contest in the show notes. The Florida-based organization Sea Angels also does beach cleanups. On their website, they feature a whole bunch of art made from cigarette butts from beach cleanups, such as a pelican, a dolphin, and a skull and crossbones. They noted on their website that when you're handling cigarette butts, you should always wear gloves because some people have contracted respiratory diseases from handling used butts. So if you have a hankering to make cigarette butt art, that is something to keep in mind. Another Florida-based beach cleanup group made a sea turtle sculpture from 1,200 cigarette butts. The turtle was made by marine biologist and artist Shelley Marshall. They called the cigarette sculpture SIG. Kudos to this group, because I think that when you make a great visual, it's more likely to get media interviews. Another item that people pick up on their beach cleanups are plastic lighters. Susan Scott picks up trash in Hawaii. So she takes the lighters and she makes beautiful art of marine animals, such as crabs and albatross. Michelle Doherty, she takes plastic lighters that she gathers from beaches in Thailand, and she makes really beautiful jewelry. And you wouldn't necessarily know that the jewelry was made from plastic lighters because she's using components from the lighters, which actually kind of just look like plastic beads. So now I'm going to talk about some cigarette sculptures. Now, in most cigarette sculptures, the cigarettes still look like cigarettes. But there was one that I found called Filter Rabbit that actually looks like a soft, fluffy bunny. And it is by the artist Tom Dininger. It is quite shocking because you think it's really cute. And then you realize it's made from the insides of cigarette butts. And that is a great play on your perception of the sculpture. Jason Masir makes celebrity portraits from just about everything. I will share two of his cigarette portraits in the show notes. They are of John Waters and David Lynch. He has a book coming out this month called Pop Trash, where you can see a whole bunch of his celebrity portraits made from recycled materials. 
Jesus Bubu Negron hired street cleaners to collect cigarette butts in his hometown in Puerto Rico. He layered and wove the butts to make a carpet. He made a pattern in the carpet, contrasting the yellow and white components of the cigarettes. Flore Garcia Boer, a student in France, made a dress from cigarette butts. She did treat the butts before sewing them together so the dress would not smell so bad. If you're interested in making clothing from trash, even not cigarette butts, but other materials, you should check out my episode on trash fashion, which is one of my most popular episodes. I'm going to talk now about how we can encourage people to not throw cigarette butts on the ground, but instead collect them so they can be properly recycled. I imagine that there are lots of times when it is very difficult to find a safe place to put a cigarette butt because you can't just put it in a regular garbage can where it might catch the other trash on fire. I found there is a product called the Pocket Ashtray, which is made from recycled PVC. The seal created by closing the flap extinguishes the cigarette butt and also keeps odors and mess in. You can search for Pocket Ashtray and it might be a great gift for a family or friends who smoke. I'm sure you've seen those tubes where smokers put their cigarette butts located outside of businesses. I also learned about some innovative signage where there were two options and a window and you could put your cigarette butt in one side or the other to vote on something. The example I saw involved voting for a favorite athlete, but it could be used for a variety of topics. Whatever it takes to encourage smokers to put the butts in a container and not the ground. A company called Ballot Bin in the UK sells these boxes. Now, the organization that everybody talks about when it comes to cigarette recycling is TerraCycle. I mean, TerraCycle recycles stuff that you would never think any company could recycle. And they really reach a new level of amazing when it comes to cigarette butts. So they sell a package that you can put cigarette butts in. And when you mail it to them, they have figured out ways to separate out the plastic and the other components of the filter. And then they take the plastic to make new products. So it would be amazing if you're a business where there are people who smoke, if you could purchase one of these TerraCycle boxes, and then they would become something that is useful. Now, TerraCycle has partnered with some cities, such as Pittsburgh, Vancouver, and New Orleans, to put metal boxes around town to collect cigarette butts. And they haven't done this in every city, but if you are involved with your municipal government somewhere, this might be a great option for you. Now, there are companies outside of the United States which are recycling cigarette butts as well. And I'm going to post a video in the show notes about a company from India called Code Enterprises that shows how they recycle the cigarette butts. Also, I learned about how scientists in South Korea are researching how cigarette butts might provide materials for longer lasting electronic devices. So we've talked a lot about cigarette butts, and now I'm going to move on to other aspects of trash related to smoking. We'll talk about cigarette packaging. So lots of people fold the colorful cardboard packaging and foil to make items such as a bracelet, a dress, handbag, sketchbooks, and photo frames. And these crafts rely on origami or paper folding techniques. Another popular art supply are wooden cigar boxes. So these are small wooden boxes and people use them to make an extraordinary range of crafts such as ukuleles, jewelry boxes, or shelves. If you search on Pinterest for cigar box crafts, you will quickly become overwhelmed (laughs) by all the incredible options available to you. The next item I want to talk about are old cigarette vending machines. So when I was growing up and smoking was more common, there would be vending machines that sold cigarettes. And now there is an organization called Artomat, which has refurbished these machines to sell art. I will link to a website where you can search to find a machine near you. They have converted about 100 machines so far, and it looks like they're only in the United States. So the way it works is artists contribute art and they get paid when the art sells through these machines. And the art has to be quite small. It has to be about the size of a cigarette box. But I've talked with artists who've contributed to these Artomat machines and I think it's a really fun idea. 
So thank you for listening. I hope you got ideas for how to creatively reuse cigarettes, lighters, and cigarette vending machines. I would love to hear about your creative reuse projects at trashimagination at gmail.com. I have gathered ideas on a Pinterest board about the projects that I mentioned today, so I hope that is a helpful resource for you. I want to talk about a project that I'm working on that is unrelated to this cigarette butts and lighters and cigarette vending machines. I am looking for two types of materials. And if you live anywhere near Washington, D.C., I would love to come and get those materials from you. The first material I'm looking for are broken camping tents. Uh, In particular, I really need the poles. I'm trying to prototype a new idea. However, I'm finding it's not easy to catch people at the exact moment when their tent breaks and before they toss it. So if you know where to get a bunch of defunct tent poles, let me know and I will come and get them. I was thinking I might go to a music festival that allows camping because sometimes people leave their tents behind, but there is none really near where I live. So if you are near a outdoor festival and you see that opportunity, let me know as well. These might also work with shade tents that you would use on the beach. I'm also collecting colorful plastic bottles like shampoo bottles. These are typically type 2 plastic, which many municipal recycling programs do not recycle. I took photos of a bunch of bottles at my grocery store so that I could be more clear on what I'm looking for. And the brands that had the best colors that were related to my projects were Garnier Fructis and Redken. So check out trashimagination.com to learn more about that project. And if you have access to a colorful plastic bottle that you don't need anymore and you could get it to me, that would be great. Until next time, may you see cigarettes, plastic lighters, cigar boxes, and cigarette vending machines as a source of art in your life. (laughs) 